Welcome back to the Tapes Archive Podcast, where we release rare interviews that need to be heard. In this episode, we have the Ramones frontman, Joey Ramone. At the time of this interview in 1988, Ramone was 37 years old and was in Japan for a concert tour. In the interview, Ramone talks about whether he considers the Ramones a punk band, the most exciting time in music history, how most bands lack originality, and whether rock and roll has paid him back for all of the Ramones' contributions. The interview is conducted by Steve Harris. To learn more about Steve, who is new to the Tapes Archive team, please check out our podcast-only interview with them, which is out now. Thanks for tuning in, and now it's time to open the vault. Seeing your concert last night, he was amazed at how you can go through like 40 songs. However, for the uninitiated fan, it might be kind of hard to differentiate some of them from the other ones. But the amazing thing is you've kind of maintained this one style all these years without compromise. Yeah, well, every band tries to achieve a distinguished trademark sound, but few accomplish it. That's the ultimate goal, is to to have a, a sound that's your own sound. I mean, whether it be the Beatles, or uh, Little Richard, or uh, Elvis Presley, or uh, Rolling Stones, or Led Zeppelin, or the Ramones, I mean, that's the ultimate thing. I mean, what, or the Who. You know, as most bands sort of um, emulate other people's I mean, like, if you think about how many bands have been influenced by The Who, say, or The Stones, you know, I mean... But in, in doing so, it's, it's something that just comes... That's just there. It's a chemical thing. It's not like you can't say, oh, I want to try and create a sound for myself. You just... It just happens that way. But sure, you can say, well, I, I want to write a song like this. But as far as creating a sound, your own distinctive sound, I mean, it's just something that happens. But isn't everybody more or less kind of a hybrid, though? Most bands, you know, really lack originality for the most part, and they're totally cliche and pretentious. I mean, if you listen to radio nowadays, I mean, it's a sickening for the most part. And of the bands nowadays who uh, have anything really distinctive or original of their own, I think it's been this band, the Ramones, who started 15 years ago, and everybody has taken a piece of... Basically, our our fundamental sound is their bases. You know what I mean? Whether it be heavy metal or the new resurgence metal, or bands that like the Sex Pistols or Metallica or Anthrax or or whoever, Poison, the Pretenders. I mean, whoever. Everybody took our sound, uses it as their bases, almost like an artist. You know, in uh, for the first step on a canvas, using putting down that that basic layer. It's exciting and uh, we, you know, and it's and it's great. I mean, rock and roll was always meant. It's the spontaneous reaction. You don't go to Juilliard for 20 years learning how to play rock and roll music. I mean, like Elvis Presley picked up a guitar, or Buddy Holly, or whoever it be, or Johnny Ramone. You know what I mean? And uh, that's what uh, he did with it. So I'm losing track of the original question here, but uh, but I mean I know that the little bit of grasp I have on this question is that in the last you know I mean of of, of current day I mean there you know the, the the last man that really created something has been the Ramones. I mean uh, I guess the most exciting period since say 64 65 was the period of 76 77 in a lot of ways it reminded me of. Um, that period when all these bands came out and they were all great, doing exciting things and uh, new experiment, experimentation kind of situations with the English invasion. Or the, I mean, there was an English invasion, but in America there was a lot of exciting things going on here as well. I mean, there was Phil Spector and the Beach Boys and uh, all, the, all the American groups. There was uh, that psychedelic period, the Doors and the Stooges and the... Uh, the seeds. I mean, there's so much. I mean, the, the '60s was. I mean, the '50s was were, was the infancy, you know, and like the '60s was sort of the experimental kind of because rock and roll was new. It was in its uh, infant stages by like '69. Um, things with rock and roll was getting lost, diluted and lost, and mixed in with all kinds of fused with all kinds. I mean, I think a lot of that had to do with LSD. I mean, it just lost its purity and simplicity and its freshness and its excitement the way it what it had in uh, the late 50s. 
or in the early 60s or the mid 60s you know what I mean it was becoming a hodgepodge of a mess of things and what the Ramones did was sort of take it apart and reassemble it and sort of uh, there was, it's almost like there'd been a clog in the toilet I mean you know it was like we sort of wrote wrote a rooted it out you know and, uh, and, and and let the fresh air come back you know we put the fun and excitement back and in the spirit and the emotion and the raw energy and raw emotion I mean I like Pink Floyd when they first came out but they, I mean groups like Yes and Pink Floyd and all these groups were just with the air like an album would become six tracks on an album instead of like 12 or 14 it was like a total mess of mediocrity and mm. pretentious cliche and all that crap you know what I mean people lost sight you brought it back yeah mentions to the talking heads about how they kind of formed the band about the same time you guys did not a year or two later yeah they came out later and we, we we always liked them we sort of like took them under our wing in a sense and we did that with a good portion of the bands that we liked at one point it was almost like uh, we were a springboard to uh, success mm. you know people would think oh yeah you play with the Ramones and because mm. yeah, it was happening that way you know yeah. everyone that supported us would uh take off yeah no I mean uh, I admire David Byrne a lot I, I really think he's a talented guy you know you know, Talking Heads were doing something different, too. I mean, it was, yeah, it was simple, and it was uh, more more arty or something like mm-hmm. that. You know what I mean? He talks about them as having evolved by taking on different styles and whatnot. Um, well, how, how does that compare to everything, you guys? Everything, you've, I mean, we've been influenced by millions and millions of influences, but what we did was, the way I see it, it's like absorbed and stored in your head. The output is our own distinct brand of music. The idea is not to let it be known what your influences were. It's just to put out something that is you and doesn't sound like somebody mm-hmm. else. You know. You also remember mentioning the Stones there as like a band that you know, successfully made its own sound. But when you think about it, the Stones also kind of went through various periods. That's I mean, also- like, I mean, they're bands that... Uh, have one or two influences and they sound that. I mean, not to say that they're, they're bad. I mean, bands like, say, the, like the Dolls or something. I mean, they were very Stones influenced and it was very obvious that they were. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So that's funny because uh, when people talk about the Ramones, at least here in Japan, they often mention the Dolls as well. And Johnny Thunders tends to do pretty good over here. Oh, not, yeah. Not, well, as good as, not as good as you guys have done this time. But well, we, we, you know, the Dolls are like one of my favorite bands. Is that right? Yeah. What did they have? I mean, what, what made them so special? Well, they were great, great songs. I mean, they look great. Johnny Thunder's great. It was, you know, I mean, if, you, if you've ever seen them or uh, you're familiar with their albums. Mm-hmm, sure. Yeah, I mean, they were, like, uh, really exciting. Clever. David was a witty guy, clever guy, and uh, they were fun. You know, they were like an event. Why does a guy like David uh, Johansson become Buster Poindexter and go through the, all this... Uh well, because he wasn't, it was when he went solo. He didn't. It wasn't happening for him to have a solo artist. And I mean, I admire the guy to take on another, a uh, whole different personality, almost like a sort of a this kind of schizophrenic other side. You know. So, I mean, I think it's really ad- admirable what he's done. I mean, how he took on this whole different identity. But he's the type who can pull that off because he's a real ham. You know, he's sort of like party meister <laughs> type. You're not that way at all, though. What do you mean? You don't... I don't want to be Buster Poindexter, no. <laughs> I mean, you're not, not a real ham? Well, I mean, I'm not a ham. Well, I mean, uh, I'm different than him, you know? But I, but he's, uh, he's, he's okay. He's ham, sweet. what do you mean by it? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that question. Well, I mean, like, uh, in his case, I mean, obviously... I mean, I'm going to say I'm going to make it. Um, when I go solo, but I'm going to make it on my own account. I don't have to change my personality to make it. I mean, I used to wear women's clothes, this, that, you know? And there was sort of, there was this kind of uh, mystique, mysteriousness about it. Going back to that 76, 77 period, that's when they started using, well, the term punk became, I guess, sort of a household term from that time on. Did you guys consider yourself a punk band or... Well, we always considered ourselves a rock and roll band. We were a term punk by the press. But, I mean, nowadays, everything is considered rock and roll music. Pisa Door is rock and roll. Mm. And so punk is fine. The thing to do is be in a rock and roll band. All the football players and baseball players want to be rock and roll stars. and Everybody wants to be a rock and roll star. So, I mean, yeah. Okay. I don't mind it at all. I mean, in a sense, we're, we're a punk band, in a sense. But then... A lot of people, they sort of see punk in sort of a negative sense, but when all it really means is, is being a rebel, 
and sort of, I mean, rock and roll was always re- rebellious until the 80s or the late 70s. Now, uh, moms and dads and the kids all sit around the living room listening to uh, Michael Jackson records or something. No, he's not rock and roll. I, it's sort of the... Uh, the edge is sort of gone for the most part. What it was really about doesn't really exist the way it, it was back when, you know? I mean, uh, Elvis Presley was a punk, and uh, John F. Kennedy was a punk, and Jim Morrison was a punk, and uh, Iggy Pop is a punk. How about Joey Ramone? And Joey Ramone is a punk. Mm-hmm. And, like, and punk means somebody that it's an attitude, and uh, it's something that, that's osmos in your guts that makes you this way. It's like, uh, I don't want to conform. I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be a part of the masses. I want to be my individual self. And I, just the way I see it, having your own ideals and own set of principles and uh, doing it your way. When a lot of people might, uh, they're going to like turn on you because you're going against the rules or the grain or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. That's the right way to, to be. You think people like uh, being... Uh... See, we're commercial without trying to be commercial. I mean, like, if you look at the music of the 60s, it was all great music. And all the songs were great, and all the artists were unique and innovative and great, for the most part. And nowadays, it's nothing like that. Everybody's like White Wine and uh, Poison and... Uh, and Bon Jovi and all this shit, <laughs> for the most part, you know. What makes that stuff shit, though? I, I it's just. Uh, What's what? Exactly? I'm not saying it's 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 just like it, there's nothing ex, there's nothing clever there's nothing exciting about it, there's mm-hmm. nothing unique about it. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, it's the, it's like the easy. It's like yeah, uh, I'm a rock and roll star, and uh, okay. see the way I feel. I don't want to be a rock and roll star. I want to be, I enjoy being myself. I don't want to live like they live. I want to live like I live. I don't, I don't, I enjoy the simpler things, you know? I'm not taken by uh, stretch limousines and stuff like that, you know? I mean, I I admire people who are unique and and are themselves and and in themselves creative and unique, like like David Byrne or something like that, or David Bowie or. I guess a lot of the greats who are dead now, like Lennon or Mark Bolin or Hendrix or Morrison or the most unique people are sort of uh, are no, are deceased for the most part. Hmm. Why do kids lap that stuff up, though? The bon Jovi's and the Poisons? And- because, you know, I, you know I, don't, I hate to say it, but there's, it's, I guess it's sort of a, a, a mentality. Like a, a flaw in the mentality? It's just that they don't, I mean, like, kids, for the most part, there's, like, this conservatism that's really uh, intense throughout the last few years, where kids aren't really very adventurous, and the ones that are are a minority. I think, I know things are changing. I think, I know, like, kids, I think, are getting fed up and disgusted, and they're kind of disillusioned with these kind of groups. They go to see these bands, but they don't get any satisfaction or fulfillment. When they leave, they feel... They didn't get anything out of the concert. When they come to see the Ramones, it's an experience. Like, we're all, everybody, you walk, when, as soon as you walk into that room, it's like we're all together here, and it's a total experience. People want to be, become part of, they want to be part of something. Come to see the Ramones, you're part of something. Going to see a band like White Lion, you walk into a, to a concert arena, and they're here, and you're over here, and there's a gap in the middle. And that's it, you know. And what are you getting at? And they, and they, I really think they feel kind of cheated. And I think for the ones who really do feel, know they're kind of being, they're being screwed or taken. The ones who don't know, will never know. The thing about Ramon's aid and also Bonzo goes to Pittsburgh, are these uh, signs of change? In, uh, oh, also, your participation in Sun City. Are you becoming more politically vocal? Well, no, well yes and, and no. We've always been aware. The Ramones are a multidimensional band. And when we when we first started out, we were coming off the heels of Vietnam. And we didn't. Everybody was anti-Vietnam, and everybody was singing anti-war songs. And there was, whether it be Bob Dylan or Joan Baez or Country Joe and the Fish or whoever it be, I mean, we didn't want to. We didn't want to be 
be doing what they were doing. And basically, our songs in the earlier days were more about like alienation and frustration, uh, you know, stuff like that. But I guess around '84, the world was changing drastically with uh, Iran and uh, Gaddafi and all this stuff, and uh, it was the death squads, and it was things were getting scary, you know. And uh, so our songs, things started changing basically with uh, with ourselves as far as the way we were seeing things, the way we were writing. We've always been serious, so I mean, I don't want to say we're getting serious now. Yeah, I mean. Um, the world's a different place nowadays, and it, uh, so it, it definitely affects you. A song like Bonzo Goes to Bitburg, we were, we were really disgusted while we were watching the news and saw Reagan going over to, to Germany and uh, felt we had to do something, you know. It, it sort of just was uh, an urgency. With um, Sun City, like little Stephen called me up, and you know, well, Bonzo, he was saying, was his favorite song, and he was putting together um, all different walks of various musicians together from all different walks of music. He's always been into the issues and stuff and um, really sort of turned me on to, to the whole thing because I, I had been from the news and newspapers, you know, he, he really sort of uh, opened, your eyes. opened my eyes. Because basically that's what the Sun City Project was all about, was to open people's eyes and minds and uh, sort of uh, raise co- our consciousness in a sense, you know. That, that whole situation is really sick. And that what Ramones did, it was sort of a, a double entendre. I mean, every week there was a different um, aid for something or other. You know, it sort of became a bit of a joke. But, you know, sure, there's nothing wrong with uh, getting involved. It's good, it's healthy. But uh, I guess that was sort of poking fun at it a bit. I mean, obviously, people are jumping on the band where you're going to have to live aid. We were raising Ramones consciousness. <laughs> Many decades from now, still singing uh, Blitzkrieg Bach. Well, you do it as long as you feel you, you're doing something special. If it's not in you no more, it's time to, to move on to something else. And that's the problem with most bands and musicians. They just don't know when it's time to move on to something else, you know. And, uh, and it's kind of sympathetic in a lot of ways, especially if you really admire somebody. You know, and they come back, they make these comebacks, like everyone's making these comebacks, and for the most part, they're all doing it because they're broke, because they blew all their money on drugs or whatever, you know. In some ways, you know, you understand, well, there's a lot of money to be made, that's why the Rolling Stones will go on forever. I love Keith Ridge is great, you know, and uh, stuff, but, you know, I mean, it's, but that's the case. Stones can make a killing, and uh, so then they know it. You know? They already broke up, they're broken up as right now, at this instant, but, you know, but I, you know, I read Rolling Stone, they're getting back together, because Mick Jagger, uh, his two solo albums flopped, and, uh, Keith Richards' album flopped too, but, but at least Keith wanted to, he wanted to keep the, the Stones together. And it was Jagger who sort of took off there, and I uh, like seeing Aerosmith back. It's exciting seeing them back because they have a good, healthy attitude. You know, they're all cleaned up and they're all, uh, I mean, they're doing good things, you know. But I mean, I've seen a lot of bands coming back. It's like, uh, I saw that thing at the Atlantic 40th anniversary. Did you see uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash? Yeah, sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or Led Zeppelin for that matter. I mean, oh, my God. You break. Do you think anybody's pointing the finger at you guys saying, when are the Marones going to go on to something new? Go on to something new? Yeah. No, what do you mean? Well, it's like, uh, you know, it's like he said, it seems like you guys have pretty much been pursuing, doggedly pursuing the same Well, you, you just said, I mean, uh, about us writing songs like Bonzo Goes to Bitburg. Mm-hmm. We're always changing. Uh, we have a definite sound, but we're always, we're always changing and uh, we're always growing. You know, your philosophy and your ideologies, uh, they, well, they change. I mean, you're always, every day is a, a new learning experience. That's the way I look at it. I mean, it's exciting being here in Japan. I mean, uh, we don't have to come to Japan. We could stay, we could tour. And, uh, we could do world tours in New Jersey, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, no, we well, we do very well everywhere. But I mean, it's exciting. It's exciting uh, touring the world, and uh, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a new experience, and it's uh, it's a new adventure. That's how I see it. Matter of fact, this year we're going to be doing we're on we're on a world tour now. We're going to a lot of new territories we haven't been and and then we've broken new turf for bands i mean we were the first band to go back to italy when uh there were all the riots and stuff i mean patty smith and louis that you know we, we went back and well that was our first time but it was great we let them know it was safe 
and uh, with Spain and Portugal and uh, Brazil and uh, you know, Argentina, New Zealand. I mean, we've been everywhere just about. I mean, this year we're going to Israel and Greece and uh, going back to South America. It's just very exciting, very exciting being here. I mean, the last time we were here was in 1980, and it's, uh, it's great to, to, be, to be back. This trip to Japan is very timely, and uh, they, this magazine also puts out a, a magazine that specializes in Japanese rock. When you interview all these young acts now, you say, like, what band influenced you the most? They don't say the Pistols, they don't say the Clash, they say the Ramones. I guess, obviously, somebody's plugging into that core. Well... It doesn't surprise you, I would imagine. No, because, I mean, it's, it's, it's always exciting to hear this. I mean, I never get to the point where I'm not excited to hear that someone's been influenced by us or directly... I mean, like, um, I met uh, Lars and uh, Metallica came to see us in Kentucky mm -hmm. last year and told us that, uh, that he had seen us in uh, Copenhagen in 19, I guess, in 80. And after that, he formed Metallica because of us. I feel in 76, we revolutionized rock and roll and really changed the world, brought uh, a new attitude and new excitement to music, you know. Do you think rock and roll has sufficiently paid you back for all your contributions? No, no, we never really... I think things are starting to become a bit more justified for us. But, I mean, it's it's only been in the last couple of years that, uh, you know, that you feel like you get some justification back. Like, in New York, they have the New York Music Awards, and uh, we, we got this uh, Life Achieve Lifetime Achievement Award. That was great, you know. It made me feel like Frank Sinatra, the chairman of the board. <laughs> you know, and the year before, we, we won for uh, Best Album of the Year and Best Import Single of the Year. And, uh, but we never really uh, completely got a any kind of our just do, say. But then on the other hand, you know, we maintain our self-respect and our integrity and uh, our ideals. And, uh, and that's the best to be able to do it your way and be able to carry on and maintain doing it your way and not compromise and not you know not kiss ass but where your uh, your ideals and your principles are intact and your initial beliefs are intact and you're still doing it that way that's the best to be able to walk down the street and kids come up to you and say you, you guys are the best for other bands to come up to you and say you guys are the best for you or critics or whoever, that's the ultimate, you know? I mean, that's more, more important than having, uh, getting any kind of awards or uh, gold records or this or that. To be, to be able to, to have really done something major for music that, uh, that's really changed it in a positive way, that's exciting because we, the Ramones have always been a positive thing. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tapes Archive podcast. Please remember you can always find more information about the show and the individual episodes at our website, thetapesarchive.com. Until next time, the vault is closed.